Guys, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're jumping into modern. Let's do it. What's going on, guys, and welcome to a slightly different video. Today, we are going to be jumping into Magic Online. Uh, not something we've done in quite a while, but I've really been missing Modern lately, and so I thought I would take some time and jump into it here on Magic Online. We're just going to be doing some tournament practice, so we're going to have one game in this video. We may do some subsequent videos with the same deck and that kind of thing, uh, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. This is really a test run for this because obviously we haven't done this in a long time, but... Uh, the deck we're, we're choosing to start with is Aura Hexproof. Uh, multiple reasons for that. One, it's cheap. Uh, but two, it is actually just a really cool deck. Now, in the current meta, um, I I'm going to be learning a lot because I haven't played Modern in so long. But my guess is that this probably is a bit, like, outpowered. Uh, and so we may find ourselves losing a lot. But I think that's okay. I think we're just going to be here. We're we're trying it out. We're having some fun and we're learning the meta as we go. So uh, we are going to do some tournament practice with this, which will be just a best of three match, essentially. Uh, and we'll just see how, how things work. But for anybody that doesn't know how the deck works, uh, it's a very powerful deck in its own right. Uh, the way that it works is we use things like Glade Cover Scout. Uh, which is a 1-1 with Hexproof, as well as Slippery Bogle, which is also a 1-1 with Hexproof. Uh, and we basically stack it with tons and tons of enchantments, crucially some of which have totem armor. So if the creature dies, uh, yes, the enchantments go away, or at least the totem armor goes away, but you still keep the creature, uh, which is really, really helpful. We do have Core Spirit Dancer here. Now, this does not have Hexproof, but every attachment or, or every in, uh, aura attached to it gives it plus two, plus two. And then you also draw a card whenever you cast one. So, uh, a really powerful engine for the deck. We do have a one of Dryad Arbor as well, uh, which is fetchable and uh, obviously just a really interesting card. We'll see how that goes. Uh, in practice, I've really misplayed with that, and I'm going to misplay a lot throughout this. So, this is going to be a learning experience for us all. Uh, the rest of the deck is very much packed with just really powerful uh, auras that we're hoping to kind of slam onto some of our, our creatures here. Some of these have various abilities that we'll kind of talk through as we go. Some of them get flying, lifelink, uh, protection, uh, first strike, um, <clears throat> daybreak coronet, really a, an all-star here. It does have to be attached to a creature that already has an aura on it. Uh, but if you can get this down, it's a plus three, plus three, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. Uh, which is pretty awesome um so that's kind of the main deck we have a total of 19 lands uh and that's it uh as far as the sideboard goes we've got a number of different tools here so it's it's a pretty like specific sideboard i'll be honest uh gadok teague is here really good card for shutting down a lot of the big spell decks like cabal coffer decks and things like that uh it does shut down a lot of the like karn plays um and ooh, excuse me uh and ugin plays things like that and tron so definitely a powerful card uh we'll see if it actually has a whole lot of relevance though because i know a lot of decks tend to just run big creatures right now uh seal of cleansing and seal of primordium to deal with artifacts and enchantments this does a great job of getting around things like uh, uh chalice of the void uh which oftentimes hits us for one uh because it does shut down just such a high percentage of the deck Leyline of sanctity obviously great to uh kind of combat the thought seize decks um that are trying to pick apart the hand before we can really get going and then path to exile for opposing creature decks which uh, generally is just a good card against a lot of matchups right now, Death Shadow, things like that. So we'll see how things go. Again, this is going to be a learning experience for me, so I'm just saying this right now. I'm not sure how this is going to go. We may lose every 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 single game, uh, and that's okay. We're here to learn. We're here to have some fun uh, and enjoy Modern because I really do miss Modern. I play a lot of Standard, as you guys know, and so this is something I thought I'd try a little bit different. As we jump into this, guys, feel free to share your thoughts. Let me know if you're enjoying this kind of thing, because I would like to do a little bit more of this. Magic Online is expensive, but uh, it's worth it if we get to do some awesome content with you guys. So I'd like to jump into this a bit more. With that being said, though, guys, let's go ahead. Let's jump into our game. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for our game. Looks like the opponent is debating on whether they would like to go first or not. Uh, might be that they disconnected. I have no idea, uh, but we'll see. We're going to hopefully have a good time with this one. Uh, like I said, there are a lot of decks in uh, Modern right now that have been upgraded since the last time I have played. As you guys might know, Modern is my like all-time favorite format. Uh, 
And so this is really a, a really exciting opportunity for me because I, I just, I don't get to play modern with anybody. Most people around here play commander, uh, which is funny enough, a format I don't play. Uh, and so this is something that uh, is a little bit new for me. So I'm excited about it. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see what we've got here. This isn't a terrible hand. It's a little bit slow. That actually helps quite a bit. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead. We are going to shock ourselves and we are going to go ahead and play out that slippery bogle. Um, probably like, I mean, obviously the best turn one play you can have in a deck like this is to get your, your main creature online right away. Uh, okay. Interesting. So it looks like this is going to be the amulet deck. This is not a deck I've seen quite uh, that much of, to be honest. Uh, and so this is going to be a new experience for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the way this deck works is by utilizing a lot of these bounce lands. Uh, so whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped under your control, uh, you untap it. These bounce lands tap for two mana, and so the idea is that you can essentially generate two mana right away with them. Uh, and then of course utilize a lot of extra lands here. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, they've got a double amulet play. Uh, looks like the seals might be useful here. Um, another Daybreak Coronet. Okay. So, we've got a couple of options here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just play out this Core Spirit Dancer. Uh, truthfully, I should be playing during my opponent, or during my second main, but, uh, we're, we're learning, so it's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and attack him for one here. No real reason not to. Obviously, they don't have mana left up. This is gonna be a scary turn, I imagine. Uh, they probably have quite a bit they can do, and so we're we're really hoping we can get this one going. Uh, yeah, there's nothing we can do, so I'm just going to yield through the turn. Basically, I'm kind of just hoping that the Core Spirit Dancer sticks, uh, which I imagine it probably will. Uh, so this is kind of the cool way that this deck works. So as you'll notice, they've got multiples of these. They tap it for two, then the next trigger goes on the stack, then the next trigger goes on the stack. So this one land essentially generated six mana this turn. Uh, and generally that means we've got like a primeval titan. There you go. Uh, and again, this is a deck I haven't seen in a long time, but it's kind of cool to see it working now. Uh, this obviously goes to get two more lands, uh, which come into play tapped. And then all of these... <laughs> Uh, yeah, all of these get, uh, get going here. So, can I, uh, yeah, always yield. Um, all right. Teleria West comes in. So here you'll notice they've got just tons and tons of mana. Uh, yeah. They've got nine <laughs> and they already generated six this turn. So now they can go transmute. Uh, I'm curious to see, uh, again, because I just haven't played this in so long, I am very curious to see uh, what, or, or if they just win this turn. Uh, they very well could, I have no idea. Uh, this is the problem, by the way. Not problem, but just uh, the... Um, the, the power level of modern here is certainly uh, higher than it used to be. Uh, it's very much a turn three, turn four format uh, where I think it used to be more turn five or turn four, turn five sort of thing. Uh, what I mean by that, by the way, in case you don't know, because again, I know we play a lot of standard and we don't really talk about things in terms of when you're supposed to win the game uh, or when you expect to win the game. But the reality is uh, most of the time you you can win the game like right away uh, on turn three or turn four in modern. Uh, standard is a little bit more freeform, obviously. You can kind of get around that a little, but. So I think we just lose this turn. Um, they've got the Valakut out. So whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if you control at least five other mountains, uh, you can have this deal three damage to any target. That's pretty good. Um, I'm also just taking the 12 because on the off chance they can't kill us this turn, uh, we do have Horizon Canopy into Spirit Link into Daybreak Coronet, which actually does translate to quite a bit of damage uh, as well as quite a lot of life gain. Um, 
one thing to note the spirit link does not give life link it gives the ability that whenever it deals damage you gain that much life the important distinction there is that you can't double up on life link however you can double up on the life gain uh, so between the daybreak coronet and the spirit link you do actually gain double the life uh, which is pretty cool very cool uh so yeah all right so again i fully expect we're pretty much dead here um but i'm letting them run through it just in case i don't know if they can just finish this off they may not honestly have that many mountains either it doesn't look like they do so we take 12 graciously to the face um and they've got quite a bit of mana left open um, but it looks like it's our turn, so we did get a turn here. <laughs> uh, ethereal armor is pretty good as well, but I do think we're kind of locked into uh, going this route. We probably should have waited on that land drop uh, and gone with something else potentially, but it's all good. Uh, we'll we'll figure that out. Um, yeah, and then we. You have to pay a life to do this, sadly, but uh, I'm. 100% equipping up the core spirit dancer here. I don't feel this deck is a super interactive deck. Uh, and what that means for us is that we should be able to just kind of bide our time here. There's really no reason, obviously, to leave up the, the slippery boggle. They have trample. There's really not much they could do. Okay, they're going to blow that up. Um, yeah, I would love to take that ability. So we do get a forest here. Um, and this is very underwhelming now because obviously uh, we only gain a couple points of life. Let's go ahead and equip this guy up one more time. Um, yes, I would love that ability. Uh, and now at the very least we have a 5-7. Um, so what this means for us is that we can effectively block one of these uh, and hope that we make it. Uh, but chances are we won't. Um, if they get another primeval titan down they can give it haste i'm sure and we're just pretty much dead dryad what a great card dryad of the illusory grove is very very good we do need to make sure we keep in mind they've got that uh besiju um makes a lot of sense so yeah um oh they just get to bolt us basically did they have yeah, so they're just going to nuke us for as much as they want. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so we can go ahead and concede the game here. Uh, well done, opponent. Let's go ahead and jump into sideboarding and see what we can do. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, I do kind of like the ley lines. That does shut down the... There's a lot of cards actually to like here, in my opinion. So we may not need all the Path to Exiles, but uh, that is certainly a good card. I think Gadok Teague is not for this matchup. Uh, the Seals do a great job of dealing with the Amulets. Uh, sorry, by the way, my... my uh, There we go. Ish. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's see. I think Griff Spoon is a bit slow. Uh, it's nice because it gives flying, but it doesn't, like, we're not going to be able to use the ability on it most of the time, so I'm not that worried about it. Um, the question is do we want all the Path to Exiles? Do we need, like, Spider Umbra as an example? I don't think so. The Umbras don't seem quite as good in this matchup just because I don't know how often they're going to be like trying to remove what we do. So we're kind of looking for the more powerhouse things. Uh, Spirit Link does seem useful. Uh, let's see. Pro Creature seems pretty important. Um, we do need to think about our mana curve as well. Again, we've only got 19 lands, guys, so we do have to keep that in mind. I think I'm gonna trim one Path to Exile, just have three. Uh, and chances are, well, we'll see. Um, maybe we do take out the Spirit Mantle. I think we want more of the heavy hitter enchantments, if that makes sense. Uh, so maybe it's also two Hyena Umbras. We're trimming down quite a bit on our umbras or our, our auras here, and that is kind of a danger of the deck. Um, 
but I think we need to try it. You don't want to over sideboard in this deck, but I'm trying it just to see how it goes. Again, I really don't know. Uh, and so we're, we're going to be learning this one together. Unfortunately, this is not a keep. Uh, and that is a pretty common play here is that we just don't have that many lands. Um, this is a keep. It's, is it though? So here's the thing. Horizon Canopy is a great tech land because it does allow us to just draw a card. Uh, and obviously we've got plenty of lands that we can use later on. Uh, the question is, is this good enough to just keep us going? And do we want to go down to five? And I don't really want to go down to five. So I am going to keep and not feel very good about it. Oh, that was dumb. Well, that was accidental, but that's cool. We'll lead with the basic. Uh, that was... 100% a mistake. I was not thinking about the mulligan. I was like, oh yeah, I just want to play the Razor Bridge ticket. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we should have thrown a Temple Garden back, most likely. Arboreal Grazer. Okay. Uh, so we very much need to find another aura is really the, the play here. Um, anything kind of opens up the, the play for the Daybreak coordinate. Um, Seal is not bad either, but that is certainly not ideal. Let's go ahead. I'm... Mm. I think we'll just go ahead and play this. We're just going to double up on the, uh, the Slippery Goggles here. Um, they did not play an amulet, which is pretty relevant, uh, to be fair. What the heck? Did they just, like, completely sideboard out of the, the main game plan? Sure, there's Dryad. Uh, so now they can start playing extra lands. Cabin of Souls, that's fine. I don't particularly care about that, to be honest. Um, There's the amulet. I was wondering when that was gonna happen. All right, give me a seal. Let's blow that up. Wow, every single. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and sack the uh, Horizon Canopy now. <laughs> that's really bad. Uh, we've drawn nothing but lands if i'm not mistaken which is really bad in a, a buckle stack not at all what you want um the opponent's not just like going off here though which is pretty interesting uh and they didn't have a land wow and we get another boggle <laughs> okay uh well yeah, i mean it's what we've got so <laughs> let's go for it uh probably a bad keep on our end for sure my hope was that we weren't going to draw three lands, four lands in a row. It is what it is. Uh, so here they're going to create the uh, artifact token off of that Urza Saga. Such a great card, Urza Saga. It's ridiculous in my opinion. Um, they're going to be able to go fetch up another amulet if they'd like. And now at this point, like a single seal of Primordium or Cleansing is not going to, uh, to help us. Um, but hey, good news. We've got three little boggle boys <laughs> um yeah <laughs> we'll see i am not convinced uh yep there it is our evil titan comes down um very curious though because i don't know well i guess they can search out whatever lands they want so they should be fine there's the valakut uh i would have i mean honestly like a ley line in our opening hand would have been amazing because it does shut down the Valakut play. Uh, they really, that would really be like a useless strategy against us with the ley line uh, because they can't target us. They can't target most of our creatures. The only thing they could hit is like a core spirit dancer, which we don't have yet. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're pretty dead. Uh, what's the option here? We could triple block. That seems terrible. We just take it. Yeah. So what, 12, so we're just dead. Well, that was really sad. <laughs> we got owned, guys. We got very owned. Let's talk about this for a second. All right, guys, so sadly, uh, we didn't even get one win. <laughs> that was really rough. Um, but you know what? It's okay. Again, this is our first look into modern in a very, very long time. We are going to continue with the Aura Hexproof deck, I'm sure. Uh, if you guys enjoy these kinds of things, let me know. Because again, it's a little bit different than our norm. I know we don't 
We don't play a lot of things other than standard on this channel, but I do want to try doing some other formats and, and learning a little bit more about uh, more eternal formats because I just don't get to do that very often. Uh, I would love to jump into things like Popper eventually and things like that and just kind of spread that out. Uh, and so please feel free to, uh, to let me know your thoughts. Um, I did not play super well, but that's okay. I'm not great at modern yet and I'm going to try to get there. So I do appreciate you guys being so supportive. Hopefully you'll let me know in the comment section some of the better play patterns we could have had, anything like that. I would really appreciate it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, again, I am gone at the moment uh, as you're watching this, and so I apologize. I'm not here to respond to comments right away or anything, but thank you guys again. I really do appreciate it. I love you all very much. Hope you're having a fantastic week, and I will see you again very soon.